What is up everybody? So today we are going to be designing our tiny house cabin. So for us in our property in the mountains, step one was obviously to get the driveway up there and to get the camper in place. So now that we have the camper in place, we want to work on step two. Step two is putting our kind of tiny house auxiliary cabin in place and turning that into a living space so that way we can get rid of the camper and start building our cabin. So today I'm going to walk through uh, designing our uh, designing our cabin, designing our tiny house, and showing you you know some more complicated ways to do it, which are still very simple and easy to learn, and some straightforward uh, you know browser based design processes that you could use to maybe help design your cabin. So let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you guys what I'm doing. So first, I'm going to walk you guys through a SketchUp-based design. So I've used SketchUp for uh, several years now. Um, it's very simple. It's intuitive to use compared to like a CAD or Fusion 360 or an NX. Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys are f familiar with those, but you know, I really feel like if, if you're you know somewhat decent in computers, you can you can learn or teach yourself how to SketchUp. There's also tons of you know resources online for do that stuff. So. First, I'm just starting with the outer perimeter of the cabin, which is a 24 by um, 12. So just starting with the base with six inches and, you know, raising that foundation and then, you know, raising the wall with the push pull tool. So this is going to be a lean to style roof. So with that lean to style roof, I'm going to go ahead and do the top uh, or the front facing wall um, because it's a 312 pitch. That wall is going to be 10 foot on the front and it's going to be seven in the back. So what I'm doing here is just adding an additional 12 inch overhang to the front. Um, and that's just to kind of match the look of what our cabin is going to be in the mountains, our final cabin. And I really want this to, to match aesthetically uh, the cabin that we already have planned and built that we had professionally designed. So got the uh, overhang here and I'm just, you know, adding some walls, removing some walls, some features so that way I can go ahead and um, add the interior walls as well to the same height. You know, lean to sheds as far as on SketchUp just take a little bit more effort. So we're just going to use the push pull feature to remove the material from the doors. Um, we're going to add the six inch um, bottom foundation, which, and this, these are just approximate numbers. This is really just to give yourself a visual guide to what you're, to what you're designing or what you're going to build. So, I mean, depending on what your use case is for this, it doesn't have to be exact. I mean, obviously if you're going to take these plans and give them to a builder or build it yourself, you're going to want it to be, you know, as accurate as possible. But I mean, if you're using this maybe to to figure out a build list or figure out just general dimensions and specifications. I think this is definitely something that would aid you in doing so. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to go up. I believe we're going to do a 72 by 80 sliding glass doors on both sides, two foot off the wall. So the doors are going to be 80 inch high by 72 inch wide. So I'm going to add the left one and now I'm going to add the right one. So the, the right one is going to be um, the door for the living room space, and the one on the left is going to be the space for the bedroom. So now that i got both sliding glass door uh, slots open, I want to put a transom window uh, above, kind of where like the little kitchen uh, area is going to be, just to let some light. So that wall that I'm working on right now is actually going to be like a cabinet-type wall, um, it's going to be, it's obviously taller than the rear wall. And the reason why I did that is because, because the house is so small, um, I wanted to be able to use that wall to put a ton of storage. So I want to have full cabinets, top, bottom. That way you can use the bottoms for more kitchen related stuff. And maybe you can use the tops for more just miscellaneous storage, stuff like that. Um, so now I'm just kind of fixing the wall to, to where it'll allow me to install that transom window. And the transom window is not big. I think it's like six inches by three foot. And um, this, this whole wall is kind of southward facing. Southward, um, I would say western facing. Um, so 
even though I don't have an abundance of windows, having those large sliding glass doors is going to let in tons of light. And really, this is important for me um, to have those big sliding glass doors instead of windows is because one, economically, it's so much cheaper just to buy sliding glass doors than it is to have the same size of a window. Plus, it adds functionality that you can actually use it to obviously go outside or go inside. It's a now a double door. You can you can go out without going through the um, living room area. And part of that decision was because, yes, I wanted it to be, it's, it's obviously only a one bedroom, a tiny house, but I wanted it to be able to function as kind of two separate individual kind of partitions, if, if you will. And, you know, you could have, you know, let's say you go up with a couple friend or something like that. Uh, the living room is a pull out, a pull out bed. So now you have two separate kind of living spaces and, you know, you can go in and out without really disturbing them uh, through those sliding glass doors. So I thought that was, that was kind of, kind of cool too. And plus those sliding glass doors are facing the mountain. So you want to be able to see that, that full picture of the mountain. So this window I'm adding here is um, just the window for the living space area. Um, it's going to be facing kind of like, you know, the parking area, stuff like that. You know, you see where people are, are here or there. Um, and it's just going to be a small kind of 24 by 36 insulated window about, you know, mid height just centered on the wall. Um, so this really is just to let in more light into the living space again. It's not necessarily functional, um, but you know, it's, it's something that I felt like was, was necessary because there is so few windows in the house with the exception of those sliding glass doors. So we're gonna do the same exact size for the front, which is going to be a 36 inch long, about a six inch tall. Uh, maybe it's gonna be taller, but we'll just do this for now and remove those guidelines that I used and that's it, that's the transom window in the back and that, that that's gonna let light into the bathroom uh, on that far wall, which is um, gonna be necessary. You don't want it to be completely dark in there. At least then in the bathroom you can look out at the trees or the mountains and stuff like that and let in that natural light. So, all right, so we got all of that and now let's see if we can import uh, models into this. Okay, so so I have a free version of SketchUp, which you can use a free version too. It's the 2017. It's not called um, SketchUp. I think it's called 2017 Maker or 2017 Maker Workshop or something like that. Um, I used to have the pro version, but it's like $200 a year subscription. And I really just couldn't justify the cost just for little hobby things. We're going to download. No, no, we're going to get the sliding glass door. And that's going to be a 72 by 80 sliding glass door. And we're going to download that Collada file. And then we're going to import that into SketchUp. So now that we've imported that file, we're going to go ahead and orient it to the face of the building. Now that it's oriented, we are going to try to just put that in place. So we're put. Uh, okay, yep. Um, yep, okay. Okay, I just I made a mistake. So I accidentally uh, designed it to be uh, 80 inches wide and 72 inches tall, which it's not a big deal. I can fix that. I'm just gonna uh, redraw the wall and I'm gonna use the push-pull tool again to create a larger space now and just remove that section of the wall that's there and the section of the wall up top. And there we go. So now that we have the door to the right size, we're gonna do the other one as well. And now that we've got that, we're going to push pull again, remove that space, remove those blocks. And now we have the correct size for these sliding glass doors. So, like I said, this is very easy to, to you know fix mistakes, to change things, as long as you obviously know what you're doing, but it doesn't take much for you to um, you know, really learn this software. So, Got that door. I'm just having a little trouble here. There we go. Got that all cleaned up. And now I'm going to go ahead and stick that door in. All right. So putting the door right here, we're going to first you need to, it's usually easier just to line it up on the correct plane. And then once you get the correct plane, you just kind of just click it again and put it in place. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and control C to copy. And I'm going to paste another door. And there is our front doors. That's what it's going to look like on the front. 
So now, same process I did earlier, I'm going to go to SketchUp 3D Warehouse. Now that I'm at SketchUp 3D Warehouse, I'm going to search for my window. It's going to be a vinyl insulated um, 24 by 36, I believe it was. And I'm going to download that file. Once I have that file downloaded into a, a Collada file, I'm going to import that again into the 3D, or I'm sorry, into SketchUp 2017. So I've got that window. I'm going to stick that in place, make sure that it's oriented correctly. Looks like I have it backwards. So I'm going to flip that around and I'm going to insert that into our window hole. So again, find the correct plane. Once you have the correct plane, then you just slide it in one more time and it should fit perfectly. And there we go. So now the window is in place, we're going to try to do the transom window. Let's see. I don't think there's going to be a lot of transom windows like I'm doing. So we may just have to make something work. Let's see. I don't really see the right one we're looking for so yeah we're just gonna end up having to just grab something and kind of just making it fit so all right let's see let's just go ahead and go with this one uh, we'll download again the Collada file and we're going to import that into SketchUp again and all of these come in zip files. You will have to use some sort of um, uh, unzipping type software, whether it's WinZip. I use 7-Zip because it's free. So we're going to go extract that. All right, so now we got that transom window imported. And as you, as you can see, this thing is huge. Um, there's different ways you can do this. You can either, um, anything you come in comes in multiple segments. You can either explode it and you know edit it based on the way that the size that you need it that's one way you can do it or you know if you just want to plug and play you can uh, just go ahead and just use the scale tool it really doesn't matter what the window looks like as long as the rough openings are going to be the same so just to for show just for all all intents and purposes I'm just going to shrink it down to size versus designing the actual window the way that it looks so like I said, just going to stick this in and use the scale tool to just modify it to the size that we need it. There we go. All right. And it looks like, you know, this file is either incomplete or just not a very good model. So I'm just going to draw the wall a little bit around it and then delete the wall face. So that way now we have a little transom window. All right. So now they got that transom window in. We're going to spin around to the back to where the bathroom is, and we are going to do the same thing on the back side. So we're going to copy this, and we're just going to paste it, and hope that we can just paste it in place, just like we did with the doors. All right, so this is our finished cabin. So this is you know obviously what you know what we're going for this is what's going to be our tiny house but let's go ahead just to show you guys what we're going for as far as the design colors and let's just show you how if you were to design something like this you could test out different color combinations different textures different um, siding options and you can do all of that through SketchUp as well so as you see there's different siding options there's different roof options uh, we're gonna go with a metal roof on this and as you can see it defaults to a uh, barn red metal roof but you can actually open up the properties of the individual texture that you're applying to the cabin or to the shed or whatever structure you're building and you can modify those properties so I'm gonna open that up and it's going to pull up a it's gonna pull up a window for me to adjust the color wheel for the texture so I'm going to click edit on the texture and there's the color wheel and I'm going to just go ahead and change that to black which is going to be the texture for our cabin and I'm going to click the texture and repaint the roof to the metal roof with the applied color that I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. It's currently highlighted as the active item, so that's why it's kind of got like a little hue of blue to it. But once I deselect, you can tell it's, it's nice and black. All right, so the outside of our building is going to be like a um, uh, Duratemp type siding. I don't think that there's any matching 
texture profiles for something like that on here. They have different woods and stuff, but it doesn't really show like that eight inch groove that it does for like a dirt temp siding like you see on, you know, sheds and tiny houses and stuff like that. So I think the way we're going to do that is we're probably just going to go ahead and select some sort of, you know, similar wood based siding. And um, we're just going to have to use our imagination for that. So there you go. So like I said, it's it's very functional. It's very easy to use. And now we have a three-dimensional version, somewhat accurately uh, portrayed here in SketchUp. So that's one way that you can build your cabin. So I'm going to show you, you know, a second way to build your cabin. So another simple way that you can design a cabin other than using, you know, software such as SketchUp or Fusion 360 is you can use a simple shed building tool. So a place called um, Spring Valley Sheds has a shed tool that you can design online. You can, you know, go on here and put in your sizes and check the different styles, whether it's a lean-to style, whether it's a Dutch roof style, A-frame, or hip roof. Those are all different types of options that you can choose from when you're designing your shed. So sheds recently have been really popular and you know, essentially turning those into tiny home cabins. I know there's different rules and regulations in your area for that to be legal, but um, I think it's a very viable option and you know, those risks are kind of up to you to take. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of design this in a shed roof style uh, just like we did on the SketchUp design software and um, there's a lot of different options to choose from. I'm going to go again with the 12 by 24 and it has my siding already selected. I'm going to position my doors. Uh, these are just standard 72 by 80 doors and put my transom window up top and I'm going to make that yep 10 by 36 stick it up top and I'm going to now put my window on the correct side and I'm gonna put my transom window in the back and I'm going to go ahead and just select my color options and black for paint, black for the roof and black for the trim and there you have it. The same cabin that I just designed in SketchUp I designed on this online shed builder tool in a matter of you know, few minutes. So this, this is something that's a, that's a viable option if you're going to have someone design your shed for you. So now that we have the shed design, I want to create a floor plan. So whether you do it in SketchUp, whether you do it in um, a shed building tool, you know, it's still important to understand how you're going to be able to fit all of that stuff into your tiny home and your cabin or what you know what what you're building so we're gonna go ahead and start with a floor plan design of a 12 by 24 which is what we have in mind for our tiny cabin and we're gonna go ahead and create that outline so we're going to say it's going to be six inch walls just to give us a little space you'd rather have more space than not enough space when you're designing something like this and we're going to go ahead and create that frame. So it's about 250-ish square feet. Um, and we're going to go ahead and put our doors. So our doors were two foot from the wall. They were 72 inches wide and 80 inches tall. So we're going to go ahead and adjust that. So six foot wide. And in the settings, we can go ahead and modify that to where it is also 80 inches tall. So we've got both doors there and we have now the window. So we're going to go ahead and put the center window. And this is a really great app. It's called floorplancreator.net, I believe. Um, but you know, you can pay a price to get a certain amount of plans. I think they have a free plan option, I'm not sure. But I got this 10 years ago when I was, you know, thinking about this process and I've been using this thing consistently for the last 10 years, just like, you know, trying to generate ideas of different layouts and different floor plans. 
So now that we've got the center transom window in the back for where the bathroom is going to be, we're going to put the couch. And this is a queen size bed for the bedroom area. And we're going to go ahead and start drawing some walls, maybe place the bathroom. And every, I've realized that everything kind of centers around how your bathroom layout is going to be. Um, that's the most important thing. You get your shower in, you get your toilet in, and once you have those things in, you kind of just build around it. You know, once you start getting into like custom size anything, or it's custom size windows, custom size you know, showers, you know, toilets, sinks, vanities is when the price really starts going up on things. So if you kind of get just your run in the mill, you know, corner shower, you know, your run in the mill toilet, stick those in place and then build around that. It's going to be a lot cheaper than building the space and then trying to, you know, purchase a specific size shower or a specific size toilet. So same thing with those, you know, uh, sliding glass doors just using your generic you know size sliding glass doors and just doing your rough frame um, your frame out for those sizes so so now that we got the bathroom in place we're kind of just drawing walls to simulate where everything else is going to be so I kind of like this design as I said earlier because I want there to be some sort of partition um, between the living space and the bedroom space I know that it would be much bigger if you know, you minimize the amount of walls completely and made it some sort of studio type um, floor plan. But for me personally, that's not what I want. This is, you know, an auxiliary cabin. This is not where we're going to stay long term. This is only where we're going to stay while we're building the other cabin. And then it will be a guest house or a, you know, a, a second living area for, you know, um, friends or family when they come over. So I, I like the use of pocket doors. Um, it, it, saves a lot of space from having to swing you know um it swinging doors make sense sometimes but wherever you can put a pocket door it's always going to be beneficial even though you know at least larger gap on the floor um between the bottom of the door and the actual floor but you know that's kind of the sacrifice you have to make so originally i was thinking that i was going to not have a sink in the bathroom that was something that I kind of thought about to give myself extra room in the bathroom. But I think I've figured out how I can add that sink and still have enough room. And originally I was thinking that the, the walls would be just square, completely square. But I think if I put a angled uh, door entry, it's going to open up that living space so much more. Um, so I think I'm going to try that once I get this bed positioned, I'm going to go ahead and shrink down a little vanity and kind of shrink down a little sink. And it's really cool that the software actually changes the sink design based on the size of it. Like if you have a big double sink or a sink in a drain area, when you shrink it down, it makes it into a small little vanity sink. So there's my corner wall that I'm thinking. And in this case, obviously I can't do a pocket door, so I'm gonna do a swing open door. And doing this swing open door, there's plenty of room in the living space for that door to open. So I think I'm gonna do that just to add a little bit more space in the living area. I think you still have enough room for the toilet, you still have enough room for using the shower and the vanity, and I think it's really gonna open it up more. So I think that's what we're gonna do. So I hope after all that, you guys have maybe a clear idea of how you could go design your own tiny cabin, how you could use programs like SketchUp to aid you in designing your cabin or just giving you some sort of you know visualization of maybe some different ideas that you have. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, like Phoenix of the Mountain, and follow me so you guys can see when we start building this thing and how it comes out. So, thanks, guys. See you later.